Hiroshi Hara is a Japanese architect behind some very colossal and imaginative architectural creations in Japan. Although less known internationally compared to some other Japanese architects, he created works of large scale and importance. Some of these works are Central Train Station in Kyoto, whom everyone coming to Kyoto has probably visited, Umeda Sky Building in Osaka, Komaba Campus of the Institute of Industrial Science in Tokyo, Headquarters of Yamato International, Sapporo Dome in Hokkaido. These are, of course, only a few selected large-scale works of Hiroshihara and at Lear 5, while he also designed many buildings of other functions throughout his career, such as schools, kindergartens, museums, multiple individual houses, and even imaginative cities of the future. Hiroshihara has had a very engaging and full architectural career, designing spaces of different scale and function, being a professor at the University of Tokyo, traveling to different parts of the world to conduct research on the vernacular architecture, writing books, and studying a broad variety of subjects. Hiroshihara is an exemplary figure of what we could call an architect polymath, with his broad and deep knowledge of subjects that go beyond architecture. He has studied the works of mathematicians, philosophers, writers, musicians, and he has brought the notions from all these fields to inspire the concepts of his buildings. I had a personal fascination with the architecture of Hiroshihara and Atelier 5. To me, it appeared as this incredibly complex and imaginative assemblies of spaces. When I first saw photos of Kyoto Station, its scale and spatial complexity really impressed me. When I first visited Komaba campus of the University of Tokyo, where I had the luck to study, I was once again struck by this microcosm that the building created. Both of these buildings appear to me less as individual buildings and more like architectural complexes. It's as if a building was a small city within a larger city, an urban formation with buildings and bridges in between them. I had a chance to do an internship at the office of Hiroshihara in year 5. That gave me the opportunity to meet Hiroshihara in person and to hear about some of his architectural concepts firsthand. What impressed me the most about Hiroshihara was his down-to-earth and human attitude. Despite being such a famous architect and the name behind some very colossal architectural creations, he did not have a lot of superiority about him and he was very much willing to share his experience, knowledge, and perhaps most importantly passion for architecture. In the following interview, we asked Hiroshihara questions about his childhood, why he decided to study architecture, his influences, and so on. Before jumping straight into architecture-related questions, we wanted to get an understanding of Hiroshihara as a person. So we asked him questions about his childhood. When Hiroshihara was a child, the World War II was happening. He told us about some of his memories of escaping Tokyo air raids, of the subsequent food shortage in Japan after the war, and how the war experience at such a young age has impacted him and stayed with him throughout his life. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
we can appreciate the stories of famous and successful people even more when we learn about the hardships that they had to undergo on their path. Hiroshi Hara is no exception. And on top of facing the war at such a young age, he also faced significant financial difficulties as a young person. However, he took the only thing that he had, which was his education and his studies, and he did part-time work at the university. He did translations of architectural texts, and he also taught younger students. After the war was over, Hiroshihara came back to Tokyo. He mentions this emotional connection to the city and how Tokyo, with its larger scale buildings, has ignited his imagination as a young person. So, I always talk about Komiya, there is a department that I have in Kawasaki. The department is an elevator that is on five floors. The elevator is on the same floor, and the elevator is on the same floor, and the elevator is on the same floor. We asked Hiroshihara why he decided to study architecture. The answer, or rather the thought pattern that followed, seems to be a rather common one. It's about the simultaneous love for precise sciences, such as mathematics, and for the arts. I have heard the same answer before from other architects, and it happens to be true for me as well. <laughs> Role models, or inspirational examples, are important for any person choosing a professional path. In case of Hiroshihara, one such figure of importance was famous architect Kenzo Tange. During his studies, Hiroshihara briefly worked with Kenzo Tange. At the time, Kenzo Tange was working on urban planning projects, and Hiroshihara was more interested in architecture, so he joined the lab of Professor Uchida. With Professor Uchida, he was learning a lot about architectural modernization that was happening at the time. And he was translating a lot of materials connected to modernization that were coming from abroad. Architects of the second half of the 20th century laid the groundwork for what we see in the present day Japan. Modernization was the main direction in architecture. And in the words of Hiroshihara, everyone was obsessed with it. However, Hara himself took a more critical position. He did not identify with modernization fully, and instead he was trying to see if he could expand that thinking, or perhaps take it a few steps further. Mm-hmm. 
、うん、非常にオーソドックスなもんです。僕らがちょっと違うんじゃないのって言ったら、ちょっと違うの、近代化って言っても、近代化と言えるかどうか知らないけど、近代化でストレートに進むっていうことに関して、これはどうも違うんじゃないのかというふうに。Perhaps is one counteraction to the modernization and also an attempt to think about architecture as fundamentally as possible. Hiroshihara undertook an extensive study of vernacular villages. When he was a professor at the University of Tokyo, he would take his students, one of whom was Kenga Kuma, and together they would travel to see old villages in Europe, Middle East, Africa, South America. There, they would document the architecture of these villages and they would speak with the local population in order to gain insights from this age old architecture. The book of Iran, Shivam Tosa, the Kanjita, and the Moya Iran, the Saiko, the Kenchik, 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 the k e n c h そうすると、ここへ降った水を集めてきて、地下でこう、トンネルとか掘ってきて、これやって、今度は耕せるところへ水を持ってきて、それ人工的にオーエイシスを作る。そのオアシオーエイシスのところで、そこにビレッジがあってさ、もう本当に綺麗なんだよね。もう信じられない。Lastly, here here she has speak about the need for continuous practice in anything you decide to undertake seriously, including architecture. だか,だからピアニストもやっぱりピアノを一回とも弾かないでいたりなんかしたら実力がもう一回倒しになっちゃってもうやめた方がいいけると思いたと思うけど建築は何しろ建築的なことはもう毎日何か考えるから面白いっつって分かれば面白いけど分からないと本当に面白くないっていうかねどうもやめればないだけどもまだ希望はその分かんないだろうけれども何か分かる範囲が少しずつ広がっていけば